we have started with the digital data transmission and in the digital data transmission we have seen that there are two types one is the parallel communication and second one is the serial communication or the transmission we have learned that whenever the sender is sending the data to the receiver and there are multiple lines through which we are sending the data that is called the parallel transmission and there we have learned that if n bits has to transfer then there are n lines so we achieve the speed of n bits per second but if i talk about the serial communication or the transmission there only one line is present so only one bit is transferred at a single second and we know that although the parallel communication is very fast but the cost is too much so that's why serial communication is into the picture and now we are going to discuss their further types which are asynchronous synchronous and isochronous so the first type we are discussing today is the asynchronous so the first type of serial transmission is asynchronous well the diagram is already present for the asynchronous communication but we must know few things the first thing it is mentioned asynchronous synchronous is something related to the time so whenever we are saying asynchronous that means time is not important so here time is not important means we are not saying that we have to go exact with the time means in this particular time we have to send the data so that is not there in asynchronous then second thing which is very much important about the asynchronous is it send every character well we know that every character is of the byte one byte represent the character so we can say that every byte or the every character with start and stop bit start and stop bit so now here we are going to learn the diagram that how this start and stop bit going to work see the diagram let us suppose that we are having a sender and there is one receiver data is moving in the flow from sender to the receiver side now here we can see that if there is a 8 bit of data 8 bit of data means there is one byte so that one byte called the character so there is zero is added in the beginning which is called as the start bit and one is added at the end that is called the stop bit so every byte or every character is having the start and the stop bit so now we can say that there is a zero so zero signify it is the start bit and start bit always applied at the beginning we starting of the packet we are having the zero now what is the significance of zero why we are adding this start bit because it is going to alert the receiver that data is arriving the meaning is that if i am the sender and you are the receiver and i has to send the data to you every byte i will start with zero means i am sending zero means you should be ready that some data packet is coming to you so you are you are now ready now the data is sent afterward i will send the one one stands for the stop bit so that is send in the ending we know that this zero is the start bit and this one is the stop bit which is sent at the beginning and the end of the data and what is the meaning of this stop bit it alert receiver that byte is finished means the byte which we are sending is finished so that is the meaning of zero and one so every data which we are going to send will be having the zero and one in the beginning and the end now you can see that if i talk about this data also this field is the data this is the start bit this is the end bit 
or the stop bit. Similarly, this is the data. This is the start bit and the end bit. Well, I'm representing stop bit with the end bit because both will be else. That's why I'm mentioning. Otherwise, both are start and stop bit. So afterward, again, some data is arriving. Let's suppose some data is coming. There is a start bit and some data is already gone. So there is a stop bit. So this is the diagram which is mentioning. Now afterward, one more thing. There may be gap between each byte. So now you can see that every byte. So this is, let us suppose a byte. So one byte is going this way. There is a gap in between. So this is the gap. Also, this is the byte which is going. There is a gap in between. Again, the byte is going and there is a gap. Again, the byte is coming here. So these are the gaps which are mentioned. So every byte is having the gap and you can see that it is already mentioned gaps between data unit. So this this area which we are mentioning this dot I am representing is the gap. So this gap is only giving the asynchronous because we are having gap between the communication. That's why it is the asynchronous communication because sometime if I'm sending you the data between some gap will come again afterward sending the data again gap will come and so on. And one very interesting thing is that this gap is variable. So this is the variable time interval between data unit. The meaning is that the gaps which is there, these are different different gap. Maybe I am assuming that there is a gap of one second. There is a gap of let's say three second. There is a gap of let us suppose two second. So meaning is that you just assume I am sender and you are receiver. I am sending you for zero st start bit. You are alert, data is coming. I send you the data, 8 bits send. I send you one, means close it, data is finished. Waiting time. I am waiting for some time, maybe two minutes, three minutes. Again, I send you the zero, means you are again alert. Some data is coming. I send you the eight bits, then I send the one. Afterward, again, I am waiting. I will wait after two minutes, three minutes. So that is the scenario between the asynchronous communication because their time is not a matter. That's why it is called the asynchronous communication. Now we are going towards the application of asynchronous communication. So now we are discussing the applications. Means what are the applications of asynchronous communication? Well, one more thing which we must know that asynchronous communication, we are having the start and stop bit in the starting and the ending. That's why there is one more name of asynchronous communication, which examiner may ask you that is called the start and stop transmission. So the another name of asynchronous communication is start stop. So if anywhere you are getting start stop transmission, you should know that they are asking about the asynchronous communication. Talking about the first application of asynchronous communication, as we know that there is a gap every time. So we are having low speed transmission of narrow band. Well, we know that there are two types of band. One is narrow band and second one is the wide band. Just we use at the broadband. Narrow band means we are sending less amount of data. That is called the narrow band. And narrow band work on the low speed because we are having very less speed which we are sending. So there in that purpose, we can use the asynchronous communication. Or if we are having the slow speed voice channel, then again, we have to use the asynchronous communication because slow speed, whenever you understand one thing, slow, slow means we cannot send the data on high speed. So there these gaps arrive, just like if I'm dictating you something, I'm saying that I will speak and you will write. So my speaking should be 
having the same pitch with the your writing if you are writing slow and i am speaking fast so that is not possible i have to repeat again and again so similarly here we use the asynchronous means i will speak hello how are you and i am waiting you are writing hello how are you in your copy so that is the same as the asynchronous communication because i don't know how much time you will take for writing right so that is why we are having the variable gap the next application which we are having is the manual operated devices all those devices which are man operated manually means any human is involved let us suppose that the morse code which we have learned earlier we have seen that there is some kind of morse code which we are sending and if i am sending that there is a gap afterward so that gap is variable that's why all the manual devices also have the asynchronous transmission because there is no synchronization with the speed or the time and one more very good example which we are using on the daily basis is low speed communication where gap occur like the example you know that keyboard the keyboard can be of your whatsapp it can be a keyboard of anything assume that your whatsapp is open keyboard is waiting for your instruction keyboard is waiting for 1 minute then afterward you said hello okay then you send the message afterward again you are waiting for your friend reply maybe so you are the sender and you are waiting for some time so what is that communication or synchronous because how much time you will wait that doesn't fixed it is not fixed that if after every minute you have to send the message no it is depending upon you maybe after one hour you are sleeping and you are sending the message afterward so that is the example of the asynchronous communication now we are discussing the advantages and disadvantages of asynchronous transmission so now we are discussing the advantages of asynchronous communication well the first and the foremost advantage of the asynchronous communication is that it is very cheap cheap in terms of the cost well it is very less costly because you know that we are sending the data and we are waiting so there is no involvement of time whenever there is no involvement of time i can send the data today tomorrow any time so it is very cheap for sending then also it is effective effective means there is no as such problem come here so we can say that it is cheap and the effective so that is the advantage now talking about the disadvantage of asynchronous communication so disadvantage the first disadvantage of asynchronous communication is slow well we know that anything is cheap obviously it is slow also because the cost always come with the speed whenever you are having very high speed so more cost is required speed is less so obviously cost will be less that's why it is very slow communication because i send you the hello afterward i am waiting again i am telling you how are you then waiting and waiting for the variable time so that is the slow communication and one more thing which is major disadvantage it is having the addition or i can say that additional overhead of start and stop bit you assume that i said every character is having the start and stop bit the meaning is that every character means 8 byte is having one start and one stop bit so sending the 8 character actually i am sending the 10 bits means 8 bits is now added with two more bits so you see 10 bits instead of 8 bits i am sending the 10 bits so every character is having two more bits involved so that 10 bits if i am sending you assume that that is also the overhead on the network so that's why this is the additional overhead where you are sending the 8 bits but this time with the asynchronous transmission you are sending the 10 bits so this is this is the asynchronous transmission